countdown always on. Google I.O. <laughs> delivers thrills. And chills. We're really excited to unveil Nexus Q. We road test the new Samsung Chromebooks. Is anybody familiar with the Chromebook? Have you heard of it? Are they have it on commercials yet or what? I'm in charge. And we fly with swarming helibots. Or rather, they fly and I try to get away. <laughs> <laughs> Always on is on. I'm in. Hey everyone, I'm Molly Wood. Welcome to Always On, the show where we take a look at the tech that's part of your life and your future. And this week in Google Palooza, Google delivered a little bit of both. Coming up in the show, we're going to unbox the Nexus 7 and the Nexus Q. But before that, let's have a lightning round look at what Google announced and also the tech keynote that redefined tech keynotes. I bet my son would really like it. He's five. Yeah. Oh, he got me. Oh. <laughs> Google I.O. has become a major event on the tech keynote scene. And this year, the company took things up several notches. So did you, like, pay for a developer pass? And I did, yeah. It was my graduation gift was coming here. First, there were product announcements galore. The next version of Jelly Android Bean. called Jelly Bean. A Nexus-branded tablet, the Nexus 7, to take on the Kindle Fire. And a new streaming media hub called the Nexus Q. And all of that happened before Sergey Brin ran up on stage to tune the world in to four guys wearing Project Glass glasses who were jumping out of an airship in wingsuits and then parachuting onto the roof of the building where I.O. was being held. And then a series of BMX bikers and a guy rappelling down the building delivered the glasses to the stage. Oh, and then the next day, Sergey did it again. Because why not? And there they are. There they are. Uh, give us 30 feet or so. All right. Great. Thanks again. Man, that was an amazing jump. Google you also announced sure that its Chrome browser will come to iOS. The company also gave away some $5.5 million in free goodies to all the attendees at the conference. Now, between the skydiving and the insane giveaways and the Nexus Q, you do sometimes start to wonder if Google has more money than sense. And then you wonder if they even care. And then after that, you start to wonder if you care. Is that really the product representation that you want to put out there? They are not even trying not to make it look like the Death Star. This is the problem with these internet-only devices. You have to have internet. Pardon me. My fault. I love this. What is it called? It's called a Sphero. Sphero. So if you know anything about Google, you know they're all about the free food. So they got like a whole little mini Google cafeteria going here with water and soda and then all the snacks. I assume that at some point there were jelly beans here that are now gone, but I'm good because they have my favorite, Swedish fish. What is not to love about free candy and Sphero balls? The dudes jumping out of airships and BMX bikes and rappelling down the side of buildings. Google I.O. is awesome. But let's get back to the gadgets. First up in our unboxing, the Nexus 7 tablet. This is Google's answer to the Kindle Fire and the Barnes & Noble Nook. It is a seven inch full-fledged Android tablet. It's made for Google Play, which could present some problems that we'll get to later. But first, let's get this sucker out of the box, which is no small feat. Because they have the thing stuck to there, all right. We already opened it a little bit. We'll talk about that later too. Don't you worry. Get out of the thing. I need a knife. <laughs> I don't really need a knife. Almost. You guys wanted a true unboxing? There you go. Okay. So the tablet coming out, it's actually quite a bit smaller than the Barnes & Noble Nook. It feels a lot lighter. They say it's about 12 ounces. That's roughly the weight of a can of soda. Now, the back of our tablet is white. Unfortunately, that is just the developer version that was given out at Google I.O. So when you get it, it's gonna be black. The power, there we go. Google, 
It's the first tablet to run Jelly Bean Android 4.1. It has a nice high resolution 1280 by 800 HD screen, a quad core Tegra 3 processor, which is great for gaming. There's one gigabyte of RAM compared to the Kindle Fire's 512 megabytes. You can get either eight gigabytes or 16 gigs of storage. You get micro USB for charging and hookups, and it comes with NFC or near field communication, which means it can tap other NFC devices to share information wirelessly. There's also a 1.2 megapixel camera on the front for video conferencing. I think the only thing holding it back probably is that Google Play library. It is nothing compared to Amazon's. And then of course the Nook just has kind of its own cult thing going on. But when it comes to seven inch tablets, I gotta say, I think this guy is the new front runner. All that said, we hear rumors that Amazon might introduce a new Kindle Fire sometime this summer. If they do, I'm sure that they will bring the big guns, but until then, give this guy a try. Oh, but wait. That's not all. We have a bonus unboxing this week. This, my friends, is the new Google Nexus Q, or as I like to call it, the Google what the? It is an Android streaming media device, and we're gonna unbox it for the first time. Right here. By the way, this thing is heavy. All of the uh, comparisons to bowling balls seem pretty accurate. Let's cut the other side here. I mean, look at this thing. It is heavy like a bowling ball. The weird top does actually turn. And then when you plug it in, there's the, these like menacing lights that go around the end. Okay, I'll stop making fun of the bowling ball thing and give you the specs. The Nexus Q is basically an Android-based media hub. It's like a competitor to the Apple TV. It can stream music, movies, and TV shows to external speakers. It runs a version of Android 4.0 and talks to your other Android devices. The Nexus Q only streams Google Play content like music, Google Play movies, TV, and YouTube. So that limited selection problem is definitely huge here. It does have a built-in amp, so you can use it to power a set of speakers, which Google sells separately. There's 16 gigabytes of onboard flash memory and one gig of RAM. It has a micro HDMI output for hooking up to a TV or cable box. There's an optical audio port. There's an ethernet jack and a micro USB port for what Google calls general hackability, whatever that means. It also has built in Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and NFC so it can talk to your NFC enabled phone or tablet. Now you control the Nexus Q with your Android phone or tablet. And Google also says that it's a social streaming media player. So, I guess a bunch of people with Android phones could kind of collaborate on a playlist, that kind of thing. Now the headline of this thing, when all other Google TV devices and Apple TV cost $99, this one is $299 and it looks like a weird little bowling ball. I mean, I gotta say, I think it's a little bit of a non-starter. Can you say vanity project? All right, now quickly a word about unboxing. Some of you on YouTube have busted on us a little bit saying that our unboxings are not true unboxings because you don't see like the UPS box and the packing peanuts and the, the protectors on top of the screen. So I thought I would solicit some feedback. Email me at alwayson at cnet.com. Let me know if you think we should change the name, if you're fine like it is, or if you really want us to get all the way down to the knives and the packing tape. I can't wait to hear from you. Now, in addition to Android, Google has another operating system, Chrome OS, and it's been a little slow to take off. They have a new product out though, the Samsung Chromebook. This is the 2012 Samsung Chromebook Series 5 550. It's running the Chrome operating system. It has a 16 gigabyte solid state drive, an Intel processor. It's pretty lightweight, about 3.2 pounds, and a 12 inch display. It does have an ethernet port, USB, and an SD card slot. It retails for $449 with Wi-Fi only, or $549 for Wi-Fi plus 3G. But some people have argued that a cloud-based operating system where the whole interface feels like the browser might be a little too much too soon for your average computer user. So we decided for our road test here on Always On to stage a little focus group. We ain't gonna be on punk or something, are we? Like a game show. <laughs> Welcome. We need to do our makeup. I know, right? Right. Yeah. I you got a whole bunch of people behind the glass yeah. checking you out. <laughs> I'm used to being on camera anyway, so.
you are. I do a lot of paintball tournaments. Oh. I'm all over YouTube. Oh, really? <laughs> okay, here we go. Good group. Hey guys. Hi everyone, I'm Molly. So what we're doing today is testing out the Samsung Chromebooks, which are these laptops in front of you. Is anybody familiar with the Chromebook? Have you heard of it? No, no. So what we'll do is take 10, 15 minutes to just do whatever you would do with a new laptop. And then I'll come back in and ask you some questions and we'll just talk about it a little bit. All right. Sound good? Okay. These guys are barely saying anything. I wonder if they like it. Could that be? I was trying to log on to a poker site, but it won't let me. <laughs> I just looked up the good wife. Okay, how come you guys are going all over the place? I actually haven't been able to sign in yet. The one went straight to Facebook. That's America in a nutshell. She's just working remotely. That's pretty great. I'm gonna start doing focus group testing on my work from home days because then I can get paid twice to do my work. Okay, this is pretty good. One of these guys actually made it to the Chrome store. Like he's actually trying to find apps. That's as far as anybody's gotten. It's like a video game or something like achievement unlocked Chrome app store. I feel like he, he wins, like he should get one. We should give him one to take it home. He figured it out so much. Although apparently he didn't find anything that he liked because I think he's going to sleep. Uh, and trying to find the end key. Doesn't look like there is one. And see, she's discovering like that the keyboard's a little bit funky. And the other woman, I think, is in Yahoo Mail. And somewhere, somebody at Google is like, my eyes. Yahoo Mail. So I'm pretty sure that everyone who has come in has been on Facebook for the majority of the testing time. Forget about a Chromebook. Facebook book. They'll come up with a better name. What do you think of the, the Chrome operating system? It's not bad. Does it have an Ethernet port or is it only wireless? I tried to log into my Gmail account mm -hmm. and it kept directing me to another screen. That seems like Google shouldn't have a problem with Gmail. Yeah. But okay. Yeah. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of my tablet. I guess I don't know if it's the internet connection itself. I was trying to watch my soaps. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how the netbook differentiates itself from something like a tablet other than it has a keyboard. Does it seem like it would be useful to have a computer that kind of just mainly got online? And that was it? That's, That's a good be. question. It assumes 100% connectivity wherever you are. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have that, then you have a nice pretty paperweight. I see it for like, for my four-year-old. Yeah, nice Keep them quiet, you know? Smaller. I can definitely see like my parents using something like this. Yeah. And if I could have rented this for the month, that would have been fantastic. I'm just kind of skeptical of cloud operating systems with what they're trying to do with the internet mm -hmm. and how it could affect like people's everyday lives. So you wouldn't necessarily be comfortable having all your information no, like stored on mm -hmm. Google's servers? No, definitely of... not. Especially not Google. No offense to Google, but especially not Google. So in that case, then how much do you think you would want to pay for a device that kind of is like a tablet with a keyboard? No more than 300. I would want to see uh, a three digit price tag for yeah. sure. Like anything no. more than that, I yeah. would just turn and walk away. So, laptop prices, tablet functionality, no way. No way. All right, well, here are some of the lessons we learned from our Chromebook focus group. First, people seem to like it best when they compare it to a tablet, but with a keyboard. Second, the cloud operating system is not as hard for people to figure out as we thought it might be. And third, you know who really needs to make a laptop? Facebook. All right, everyone, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I go all ride of the Valkyries with a bunch of tiny, tiny flying helicopters. Stay tuned. You remember that scene in the movie Minority Report where the police send in those robotic spiders to chase down Tom Cruise while he's hiding in the bathtub? Yeah, that's coming. That swarming technology is in development in Silicon Valley, but it gets even better. These swarming robots can fly. Go. Oh, look at it go. You can feel the air from that little fan. Oh, no, not the wall. Oh, nice move. Uh, oh, oh, oh. 
<laughs> yeah, see, that's actually not supposed to happen. These flying robots, which are being developed by scientists at Carnegie Mellon University, are actually designed to help in search and rescue missions. The idea is that for any emergency situations or very dangerous situations, mm -hmm. you don't want people to go in. So things like during a fire, you want to know how the fire is progressing. When you have a nuclear reactor accident, you want to know the radiation level inside the building. Oh, sound far-fetched? That was sudden. Yeah, a little bit, but this kind of research is being done all over the world as scientists try to figure out how to make robots swarm autonomously. What could go wrong? <laughs> when you were investigating the helicopter design, did you actually have to sort of study how helicopters fly? Whoa. None of us are actually uh, mechanical engineers. Oh! oh. Uh, so what we did was that we went to the store and looked for the funnest toy. Really? Yeah. Like bought, you bought like remote control helicopters and yeah, so we took all them the, together? Yeah, we took out all their circuitry and put in our own. That's awesome. Now these robotic helicopters have radios, gyroscopes, and compasses inside so they can sense objects around them and each other. The idea is you use a gyroscope to stabilize the rotation. So you don't want your helicopter spinning out of control. You want it to sit straight and track in a particular direction. Mm -hmm. That's what the gyroscope does. Do you think you could build a helicopter now? Ha, that is a very good question. Synchronized and targeted. Man, listen to that. That sound is kind of ominous. That's the slightly terrifying vision of tomorrow. Oh, see? If you hit it, it attacks. But what about today? Would these helicopter bots work when I put them to the test? So how many can you get going at once right now? Like directing them to fly right into the palm of my hand? Oh, also, cue the Ride of the Valkyries music. They're coming at me. Oh, God. Are you sure this does not have attack mode? Ah, it attacked. Ah, I'm in charge. Oh, no, no, I'm not in charge. Oh, I am in charge. We're taking the show on the road. <laughs> me and this, me and this helicopter robot are going to Vegas. The technology still has a long way to go. I mean, what I saw in development was pretty impressive, but the notion that helibots will be able to autonomously swoop into a burning building and eventually save lives, they've got a little work to do. But looks how dramatic. So I know you say it's disposable, but it's not really disposable, right? Carnegie Mellon is not the only university to be developing this technology either. The University of Pennsylvania has a set of 16 swarming drones that can fly together in unison. The future is not just Google Glasses, people. Oh, no. All right, time for a dip into ye old mailbag. Carla had by far the most common response to our iPad torture test. I mean, other than all the people who said that they could not stand to watch it. Tell me about it. Carla writes, good golly, Miss Molly, you call that a drop test? I am on my third iPad in as many weeks. First, it slid off the hood of my car, smasked corner, creaked glass. Then, don't laugh here, my hubby swatted a bee that was trying to sting me. Yep, the iPad he used went flying, shattered. And last, but I am sure not least, jumped right out of his hands and hit the pavement. I do not let him manhandle my iPad anymore, but I do have to say your drop test was not a true one. Your iPad landed flat. Next time, make sure the corner gets a good jolt, will ya? Yeah, no, I know. A lot of people wanted the iPad to land on the corner, and frankly, we were a little disappointed that it didn't break. We're thinking of some creative ways to maybe try to kill it. I like that bee swatting thing. I think I'm going to try that. All right, moving on. Hello, TiVo people. I do not know why the Always On feed is not showing up in your TiVo menu. I do know we have emailed TiVo and asked them to add it, 
so maybe you could email them also. In the meantime, though, the RSS feed is showing up on your screen right now, so you can manually subscribe that way. All right, keep the feedback coming, everybody. We love it. Email me, always on at CNET.com. You can find me on Twitter and Facebook as Mollywood, and also over on Google. That's it for this week, everyone. Next week on Always On, our DIY Maven Sharon Backnan returns. We torture test the poor Galaxy S3, and we show you a cool, high tech way to smoke. That's all coming up next week. Thanks for watching Always On.